Welcome to Unraveling the Scriptures. The descendants of Abraham continue to fight incessant disputes, and to this day, most people remain unaware of the origin and ancient roots of the conflicts between Palestine and Israel. Many still perceive these issues as mere superficial discussions, but the truth transcends the understanding of most. In this video, I will thoroughly explore the origins and complexity of the conflicts between Palestinians and Israelis, involving Jews and Arabs. So, I invite all of you to leave your likes, share your comments, and share this video with those who still do not understand the true nature of these tensions. This video will provide answers to the question that many ask, why do Palestinians and Jews continue to confront each other? Stay tuned for this new content on our channel. The Hidden Origins of the Israel-Palestine Conflict On Saturday, October 7, local time, the armed Islamic extremist group Hamas conducted a surprise attack by bombarding Israel. This attack is considered one of the largest suffered by the country in recent years. When claiming this offensive, Hamas alleged that it was the beginning of a major operation aimed at reclaiming the territory. The conflict between Israel and Palestine is a complex mixture of political, religious, and, obviously, the genetic kinship that unites these two peoples. This conflict has persisted for decades and has left a sad toll of thousands of injured and dead on both sides. On the 7th of this month, Hamas surprised by bombarding Israel, resulting in hundreds of casualties. This attack is considered by the Jews as one of the most significant faced by the country in recent years. The attacks primarily occurred in the southern part of the country, where thousands of rockets were launched. In Israeli military statements, it was mentioned that several terrorists had infiltrated Israeli territory from the Gaza Strip. The conflict between Israel and Palestine dates back decades, if not millennia, but its modern form has its roots in 1947 when the United Nations proposed the creation of two states in British-mandated Palestine, one Jewish and one Arab. The proposal was accepted by Jewish leaders but rejected by the Arab side and was never implemented. Without an effective solution, the British rulers left the region, and the State of Israel was proclaimed by Jewish leaders the following year, sparking outrage among the Palestinians and resulting in the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Amid various disputes over territories, the Six-Day War occurred in 1967, significantly altering the landscape in the region. After the victory, Israel forcibly took control of the West Bank and East Jerusalem, then under Jordanian control, as well as the Gaza Strip, under Egyptian administration. At the time, half a million Palestinians fled the region. Since then, amidst various conflicts and confrontations, the country annexed East Jerusalem, where sacred sites for Christians, Jews, and Muslims are located, and continues to occupy the West Bank. However, it withdrew from the Gaza Strip in 2005, which has been under the control of the Islamic movement Hamas since 2007. The resolution of the conflict still faces seemingly insurmountable disputes, such as Israel's security, borders, the status of Jerusalem, and the right of return for Palestinian refugees who fled or were expelled from their lands. The conflict has resulted in several peace attempts, but few practical results have been achieved. Among the Palestinians' key demands is the cessation of the colonization of their territories, which include settlements encouraged by Israel. For example, 2017 data indicates that at least 600,000 Israeli settlers live in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. On the other hand, Israel demands recognition as a Jewish state, a demand rejected by the Palestinians, who fear compromising the right of return for refugees. Other factors, such as the delay in creating an independent Palestinian state and Israel's blockade of the Gaza Strip, also complicate the discussion. Both sides face domestic challenges that make any concessions difficult. It is essential to note that, although it has exercised control over the region, the Palestinian National Authority has lost some of its credibility among Palestinians over the years due to various reasons, such as the stagnation of the peace process in the region and allegations of corruption. 
This situation paved the way for the strengthening of an armed Islamic movement known as Hamas. But what is Hamas, exactly? Hamas is one of the leading Islamic organizations in the Palestinian territories today. It is designated as a terrorist group by Israel, the United States, the European Union, the United Kingdom, and several other global powers, leading to financial and diplomatic restrictions on the group. The name, Hamas, in Arabic is an acronym representing the Islamic Resistance Movement, originating in 1987 after the start of the First Intifada in Palestine, an uprising against Israeli occupation in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. With the loss of credibility of the Palestinian National Authority, Hamas won the legislative elections in the Gaza Strip in 2006 and pushed the Palestinian Authority out of local governance. Hamas is part of a regional alliance that includes Iran, formerly Persia, Syria, formerly Arameans, and the Shiite Islamic group Hezbollah in Lebanon. This alliance broadly opposes U.S. policy in the Middle East, particularly concerning Israel. In its founding charter, the Islamic organization set two goals, to promote armed resistance against Israel and to conduct social welfare programs. In 2017, the group updated its document, softening some of its positions. In the new document, Hamas stated that its struggle is not against Jews but against Zionist occupiers. In response, Israel argued that the group was trying to deceive the entire world. Many people on the internet, due to a lack of knowledge about ancient biblical genealogies, incorrectly claim that Palestinians are pure descendants of Ishmael, in contrast to the Israelites who descend from Isaac, the wife's son. However, in reality, the issue is more complex. Palestinians do indeed have Ishmaelite ancestry, but they also have a significant portion of Jewish ancestry. This is because in the past, many Jews converted to Islam in ancient times and adopted an Arab identity, forgetting their Jewish heritage. Therefore, the issue is more diverse than a simple division between Ishmaelite Arabs and Jews, as many Palestinians have a combination of ethnic and religious backgrounds. Many Palestinians are actually descendants of Jews, mixed with Ishmaelite Arabs, who are descendants of Ishmael, as well as with Jewish descendants. Additionally, Palestinians have a genetic share from an ancient people known as the Hagarenes or Hagarites, who were a branch of the Ishmaelites mentioned in the Bible. They inhabited the regions of Jatur, Nafis, and Nadab, situated east of Gilead, and their name is associated with the lineage of Hagar. The story of Hagar, the concubine of Abraham and the mother of Ishmael, is indeed fascinating. She was originally a princess in Egypt but, before becoming a concubine, she was simply a slave in the household of Abraham, where she served Sarah and Abraham. How did she come to be in this situation? It's interesting to note that if you consult the Torah, you will recall that when Abraham left his homeland, you are, and went to the land of Canaan, he faced famine and had to go to Egypt to buy provisions and food. There, he encountered the pharaoh of that time, a known king. Abraham feared that, due to his wife's beauty, the pharaoh might desire her and, therefore, put his own life at risk. So, Abraham orchestrated a story, claiming that Sarah was his sister, which placed her life in danger as well. She agreed to this, and what happened next is truly remarkable. The pharaoh became interested in Sarah and took her into his household, but God intervened with a miracle. A plague affected the entire house of the pharaoh, and the pharaoh himself, preventing him from touching Sarah. He realized he had made a mistake and chosen the wrong woman, a woman who was committed to someone who should not be touched. When the pharaoh apologized to Abraham and Sarah, they were all well. The pharaoh even approached his daughter and said, My daughter, I have never seen anything like this. There is a God, and these people serve him. It would be better for you to be a slave in their house than a princess here, an idol worshipper. Hagar then gave up everything she had to become a monotheistic slave in the household of Abraham and Sarah. We know that Abraham and Sarah were married for sixty years without having children. There came a point when Sarah said, My husband cannot go on like this. He is a very righteous man. God has already promised him that a great nation would come from him, 
but perhaps I am not worthy of it. That's when she offered Hagar. Thus, Hagar went from being a slave to a concubine, having a relationship with Abraham, and Ishmael was born from this union. Therefore, Ishmael is the son of Abraham born from his relationship with his concubine. What many people may not be aware of regarding Palestinians is that, in addition to being descendants of Ishmael, they also have Jewish, Hagarim, and even some Edomite genetic ancestry. Edomites, over time, migrated from one region to another, with their central region being Jordan. However, they also settled in the region that is now Palestine, including the Gaza Strip, where they intermingled with Jews, Ishmaelites, Hagarines, and other groups. As a result, the Palestinian people are, in essence, descendants of all these groups. The truth about this conflict in terms of kinship and religion is that Palestinians are indeed descendants of Ishmael, while Jews have their ancestry related to Judah, the son of Jacob, who, in turn, was the son of Isaac and Abraham. These two groups are essentially two genetic entities with a deep connection. Various genetic studies have not only confirmed the relationship between Palestinians and Jews but have also pointed to genetic connections between other groups in the Middle Eastern region, such as Lebanese, Syrians, Jordanians, Saudis, and Arabs from the United Arab Emirates, showing that they all share a similar ancestry. Previously, people used to say that Arabs and Jews were cousins, but in reality, they are more like genetic siblings. The main difference in Jewish DNA compared to Arab DNA is related to the fact that Jews migrated to Europe and, in doing so, had some degree of intermixing with European peoples. This mixture made them slightly different from their Semitic siblings. However, Palestinians, Lebanese, Jordanians, and other peoples in the region share a common Semitic ethnicity. These genetic findings highlight the deep shared roots among the different ethnic groups in the region, despite the religious and political differences that fuel the current conflict. Jews and Arabs are both considered Semites, although the conflicts in the region are not solely about their genetic connection. Instead, these tensions are intrinsically tied to the religions that have developed over centuries, if not millennia. Islam, founded by Muhammad around 600 AD, coexists with Judaism, a belief that existed long before that period. Before the arrival of Islam, Arabs followed a variety of pagan beliefs, although some shared the same monotheistic faith as Jews, with historical references, including from Arab historians, suggesting that they were descendants of Ishmael and traced their lineage back to Kainan, who was part of Abraham's lineage, linking them to the Semitic people. Even Jethro, an Arab from Midian and of Edomite descent, had knowledge of the scriptures and, in fact, taught Moses. Moses spent a long period in the home of this priest of God, who was an Arab, and even married one of Jethro's daughters, named Zipporah. It's important to clarify that the claim that all Arabs are descendants of Ishmael is mistaken and incorrect. Arabs encompass a diversity of ethnic groups, including Ishmaelites, Edomites, Midianites, Moabites, Ammonites, and others. Furthermore, there are other Semitic peoples who are not Arabs but still share genetic connections with them. Therefore, not all Arabs are descendants of Ishmael, their lineage includes other Semitic figures. Thank you to all who have watched the video up to this point. Please share in the comments if you were already aware of this deep kinship between Arabs and Jews. God bless. See you soon.